Yo, what's up guys? It's Riley. Um, today I'm going to start like the basic teardown of my other K8 because I just picked up this engine stand at Harbor Freight for like 44 bucks, Black Friday deal. So, tossed it together yesterday. Um, I got the 1,000 pound one, which is obviously enough for a K8, but I uh, don't really have any weight to get it up on there. So, um, right now I'm just going to like take off the oil pan and start taking off all the uh, emissions and the intake and stuff like that. And um, I guess we'll, we'll get started from there and see how it goes. Nacho, 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 Nacho. So, I managed to get off the, uh, the exhaust manifold. It was kind of difficult with the EGR. This engine has like 240,000 miles on it and it's never been taken off. So, I just went ahead and put some WD-40 on this nut right here and broke it off with a crescent wrench and a sledge. Uh, so, finally got that loose and then just pulled it off with the exhaust manifold. So, now I'm going to uh, move on to the intake. Alright, so it looks like that's where I'm going to stop for now. I just got the uh, bottom of the intake off. It's just kind of, it's stuck on the oil filter, but I mean, really easy. Just got to take it off, but I'm not sure, not sure if we drained the oil when we uh, took out the engine. So I'm going to have to check that. Um, probably drain the oil if there's any in there, and then um, take off the filter, drop the intake, take off the top of the intake and then just really start taking off stuff like the water pump and the thermostat and all that kind of stuff and all the uh, all the vacuum lines back here they're a mess um, so all the EGR stuff which I'm, I'm not gonna need because my other one my other K is EGR deleted so I'm just gonna toss on the plate get a new gasket good to go uh, but yeah so there's a the progress and about an hour. It always takes longer than you expect, but uh, got to go to work so I can pay to build the engine. So um, probably come back and work on it later tonight. We'll see. So basically, what I'm going to have to do is undo the nut with the wrench, and let it go through the funnel into the oil pan without it uh, touching the floor because my dad will kill me. So should be interesting. I'm going to give it a shot. Not going too good. Not going too good at all. I 
Nacho, 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 There's the intake finally, or the bottom half. Woo. Top half should come right off. Uh, looks like get the submissions. Or the vacuum taken off here. The camera literally just stopped recording as soon as I took off the top of the intake there. Uh, so both the manifolds are off, intake and exhaust. I'm um, starting to get down to the bare bones of the engine. Thing looks pretty nasty. It's got 244,000 miles on it. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here, but it'll look a lot better once I clean it up get it machined so that's probably yeah that's definitely all I have time for today got to head into work alright so today's day three of engine tear down um, don't really have that much time I have about 30 minutes before I have to leave for work so I'm just gonna take off the valve cover take out the distributor and the front cover and see if I can get it at top dead center and then see if I can get out the cams and uh, maybe the uh, the cam chain we'll see We'll see how far I get. So uh, <clears throat> I got my other head resurfaced whenever I did my head gasket and I forgot to get the front cover machined as well. I didn't know that you needed to do that and it was only like 12 thousandths of an inch so I didn't think it would do all that much. But now this distributor, this is the one that was in that engine, it's all chewed up, all the gears are all chewed up. <laughs> Uh, so I have the one originally from this engine on the engine that I'm using right now. Uh, so yeah, that sucks, but oh well. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and remove these front cover bolts uh, to the upper timing I guess the upper timing chain cover. Uh, that way I can mark all the timing. Also, if you guys didn't know, this uh, this chain guard here causes, well, at least on the really old engines, uh, chain slap noise. So if you guys ever hear um, something that sounds like chain slap in your KA and you haven't removed this uh, chain guard here, just go ahead and remove it. Uh, it doesn't really serve that much of a purpose anyway because there's tensioners and chain guards everywhere else down here. It's got these two little, <clears throat> two little spikes here that'll just slide right in, guide it on. Alright, so the next step, uh, I don't have the metric socket, I have a 1 and 1 16th socket that I'm going to use to Turn the crank, go ahead and stick down your screwdriver and start turning clockwise. So once you get to 
the second tick from the left here on the crank pulley uh, that's gonna be top dead center and as you can see if I grab a flashlight real quick if you look down in there you can you might be able to see it the pistons at the very top of the cylinder so we're at top dead center now we can go ahead and mark our timing and start pulling off the timing components With the uh, crescent wrench, you go ahead and put it here, and then you have someone pull the opposite direction. So they would pull to the right, and obviously you would push to the left, and then you'd be able to break it loose. Uh, there's only one of me, so I'm gonna attempt to do this alone. We'll see how it goes. What's up, guys? Got some friends here today. Uh, this is Landon. He's got a C10. This is Jared. He's got a Jeep. Yeah. Rubicon. Yeah. Uh, so today we're taking off the head. Yeah, this is the turbo manifold I'm using, but don't need that on there right now. Gonna take off the head and try to get it up on the stand. Beauties. So the next step is to label all the valve pucks. You gotta keep them in order, that is so sharp. <laughs> keep them in order, that way you can put them back the same way you found them once you're done. All right, so we got all these labeled now, and we're gonna go ahead and pull off the head. Got her down to the block. And we just gotta take off the rest of the timing and the flywheel and everything else and toss her up on the mount. Thanks boys. Another important thing to note, be sure to leave these sleeves in or actually take them out and just keep note of where they were. Mine only has one. There might be one slammed in over here. But just pull them out and keep track of where they went and hold on to them because they help center the head when you put it back in.
Yeah, tell us what's going on, Riley. All right, better use my uh, gallon of compressed air to take off the crank fully. Let's get it. Hopefully it doesn't move, dude. I'm scared. No, we're good. There she goes. All the way out. You want me to pull a gasket? Ooh. Oh, dang. There she goes. Ooh. That's dry, though. What's going on? So, we got the uh, pulley cooler, whatever you call it, on the uh, crankshaft pulley here. Oh shit. And basically just take any bolts and washers and thread them in and uh, make sure they're in far enough. And then you just stick this in here with the flat, I use the flat attachment, oh, not the pointed one. And then we're just gonna go ahead and screw it in until she pops out. Shouldn't take too long. There she goes. Real good, real good and slow. Oh, I'll have it. Oh, I have Because it's on the uh, puller, but... Oh, dude, are you going to let it hit the floor? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, so there it is. Real nice and easy hit. It makes it like, so much easier having a puller, honestly. I tried to get it without one, it was ridiculous. For, like 20 bucks at AutoZone, something like that. If you notice, there's a little crescent key in here. Just be real careful not to lose that. This one's just like stuck in there. It's a little bit dirty in there. Ah, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Take off the uh, bottom timing cover now. We got off the thermostat, the water pump, and the crank pulley. So I think there's like nine bolts on the bottom. We're just gonna take those off and then uh, we might have to take this off. I'm not really sure. Yeah, we'll but, figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And then uh, we'll pull off the bottom cover and then take off the flywheel oil pan and toss it up on the engine stand. All right. Going places. We got all, all nine of the bolts out. There's two down here at the oil pan, and then there's like 10 mils on the bottom and 12s on the top. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're just gonna try to tap it off now. the front cover you gotta drop the oil pan because there's the oil sump pump down here whatever you want to call it and it's literally bolted to the block you're not gonna be able to get it off unless you drop the oil pan. so just save yourself the trouble you there's literally no way so drop the oil pan hey guys look at how easy this comes off now. make sure you drop the oil pan first look at that it comes cool. right off yeah. we made the mistake of wrenching on it for about 30 minutes All the timing components in there. Here we go. It's probably gonna be a wrap for tonight, honestly. 